Hello and welcome to another AIC video. So we're back with the budget HP laptop that I showed off last week that I was pretty impressed with. Uh, this week we're gonna go ahead and install Linux Mint on here. We're gonna do the XFCE edition. I chose that because Linux Mint is pretty well known uh, and the XFCE edition is more of a lightweight for hopefully a slightly less powerful machine it should run good on there one thing to note and this will be pretty common with this particular machine is we are running a real tech uh, wi-fi adapter and those are not super common when uh, to have the drivers built into the linux base there's also a couple things we have to do before we can actually uh, install windows so let's go ahead we go to system and then down to recovery. I don't know why this is in recovery. We go to advanced startup and restart now. Uh, in here we can go down to troubleshoot, advanced options, UEFI settings. So I'm showing you two ways in how to get into this, just so that, you know, depending on you. And so we could then hit F10 for BIOS setup. So in here, we need to go to boot options and secure boot needs to be disabled. And then we have to clear all secure boot keys and it'll have you type in a code and hit enter. So you cannot install Linux until you have disabled secure boot again. You have to change secure boot to disabled and then clear all secure boot keys. And that will allow you to install Linux. So let's go ahead, we'll plug in our USB drive that I've already, already in, uh, put Linux Mint on via Rufus. I'm gonna hit F10 uh, to save and exit. And then we're gonna spam the escape key. And it should come up in the bottom left corner uh, startup. All right, so we have a few different options here. System information, system diagnostics, boot menu, again, boot uh, bio setup, system recovery. So we're going to go ahead and hit F9 for boot menu. We're going to go down to the jet flash transcend, which is this guy right here. Hit enter. We're going to start Linux Mint. All right, so we are just booting from the USB drive, which does make it boot a little slow. And as you can see here, no network devices available. So this laptop does not have an ethernet port. I do, however, have adapters. So the first thing I have is a TP-Link. Uh, what does this have on here? I don't think it tells us the model of, so it's an Archer but it doesn't say what the internal chipset is. I don't know if it's an Intel or, or what, but let's go ahead and plug this in. Let's see if that does anything. There we go. So right away, this TP link does connect and we're able to connect to the Wi-Fi. I'm not gonna connect to anything because I wanna see what else works. So I have this TP link as well. It's an AC3. And that is also able to see my home network and get us connected. And just again with that unplugged, no available, no network devices available. My other options are, is I have this dongle and I have this Dell USB-C port adapter. So let me go ahead and try this one first, see if we get a wired network. We do have that USB-C port on this side. And I have a cable here.
and we have a wired connection. Let me go ahead and unplug that. And we have this Cable Masters uh, LAN Gigabit adapter. We'll plug that in as well. And that also connected. So out of the box, you're not gonna be able to install the drivers for the Wi-Fi. You will have to do something additional to install those drivers and use the internal one. Or if you're so inclined, upgrade that wireless adapter to one that would be supported, namely one with a, like an Intel chip, which I think these all have, or these two have an Intel uh, chip in them. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is actually install Linux Mint completely. We'll get the Wi-Fi working and then we will come back and just play around with it and see what we have going on. And to install Linux Mint, you just double click on this icon. We're doing English, continue. And I'm leaving the network plugged in while we install it because maybe it will install the drivers we need uh, as it goes through the process. We'll see. Yeah, we'll install. Uh, we're going to erase the disk. I could easily dual boot this system because it does have the two drives in there. We have the 128 gigabyte uh, EMMC storage as well as the SSDI added. We're gonna go ahead and just install it on the SSDI added because that's the more performance system and it doesn't really matter because I don't use this for anything other than making videos currently. I am there. All right, and I will make you sit through this. If there's anything additional to show you, I'll, I'll turn the camera back on, but no point in watching a progress bar. All right, so we have uh, network up, uh, first steps. I'm not gonna go through that. What we are gonna do is we're gonna go down to system. I believe it's system. There it is. Update manager, we're gonna go ahead and do, there's an update to the update manager. My super secure secret password. There's a lot of updates. So we're gonna go ahead, just like Windows updates, we're gonna go ahead and update everything just so it's on the latest and greatest um, on here. And then we'll install the uh, Wi-Fi uh, adapter.
All right, so I'm throwing in the towel trying to get the uh, Realtek uh, Wi-Fi adapter to work. I even went, so I, I've spent two hours digging through forums, trying different things to get it to work. I even grabbed this. This was in my stockpile of parts. It's a Broadcom BCM 94352Z. This did actually install and I could see wireless networks, but for whatever reason, it wouldn't let me, it wouldn't take my Wi-Fi password. So I'm gonna go ahead, throw the TP link in there and we're connected. So uh, if you're gonna do this, uh, be aware that your wi internal Wi-Fi may not work that you may have to use something else to connect to the network. Now, if somebody knows a way to get that Realtek working, definitely let me know. I have literally have been digging through the uh, Linux Mint forums for a couple hours trying to figure it out. Um, one thing that I realized is those forums are extremely condescending. Like people asking for help get replies that are incredibly rude. Oh my goodness. Y'all need to be nicer to each other in those forums. <laughs> I couldn't believe some of the replies and I get it. Like I'm sure a lot of people ask the same questions over and over again, but I'm not even going to bother asking about this because, um, I know I'm not going to get a very helpful reply. So, so, um, if you know of a good way to get it working, definitely let me know, know down below. If there's a different version of Linux you'd like me to try that might have a better ability. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to try MX Linux next just because I've had good success with that with older systems and drivers and stuff. And so maybe that might have um, a better luck. We'll see. So anyways, that's it for this video. If you want to support this channel, I have some affiliate links down below. Uh, I will include a link to this adapter here because I, I use it all the time for everything. And it has been supported in just about everything I've plugged it into. Anyways, thank you for watching and I hope you have an amazing day.